immediately came a barrage of text messages begging me to come back home. I really didn't want to be around her. I was disgusted by her. Over the next few weeks, she kept at it. Whenever I came to see my son, she would beg. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post guys. I'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out. But you guys read the title. Let's just get into it. So surviving infidelity. My story of being cheated on rant. My wife and I were together for almost 10 years married for six. Our relationship wasn't perfect. But we really loved each other. We both had kids from a previous marriage and we have a four-year-old son together. She told me she wasn't sure if she wanted to be married anymore. In the couple months leading up to that day, she had become cold towards me. Sometimes downright nasty. It was a side I had never seen of her. In the following week after she told me, I started paying attention to her behavior. I could just tell something was up. I got a hotel one night just to get away from the whole situation. I called her and was asking her what was going on. She lied repeatedly, but I kept pressing. She eventually broke and told me she'd met someone and that she really liked him. Then proceeded to blame me for the whole thing and that she never meant for this to happen. The next morning, I came back to the house and packed my things and went to stay with my cousin. Immediately came a barrage of text messages begging me to come back home. I really didn't want to be around her. I was disgusted by her. Over the next few weeks, she kept at it. Whenever I came to see my son, she would beg. She mailed long love letters. Eventually, I broke. I had sex with her, and it was crazy good. Hysterical bonding that I've since read about. I ended up moving back in to give her another chance. In no time at all, she started acting cold yet again. Her affair partner had ghosted her when he heard that I found out. The phone bill backed this up. He was a nurse. He was an ER tech, 10 years younger. We tried marriage counseling. It came out that she cheated on her first husband and left him while he was deployed in Afghanistan. Wow. During this time, from looking at bizarre cash app transactions on our bank statements and questioning her, I discovered that she'd been hiding a long-term addiction to Norco, Adderall, and Coke. Oh, man. I looked at her phone bill again about a month later. His number popped up again, and another number found out this one was a firefighter. She said nothing physically had happened, sexting and nudes, but they never met up. We had that Life360, and that seemed to back it up. I finally googled the ER text number. A woman's name came up. I searched her on Facebook, and there he was. He was married, but convinced the whole ER he was single. I've confirmed this with my wife's co-worker. When I told her, her jaw dropped almost to the floor. I started laughing. According to my wife, his condo was completely bare. Like he just moved in. He knew exactly what he was doing. I messaged his wife and told her she left him and moved out of state. The fireman hooked up with another nurse and didn't want to deal with the drama after I confronted him. I stayed for over a year. I wanted to see my son every day. I didn't want to be a single parent again. It drove me crazy. Couldn't trust her at all. I kept replaying the whole thing. And I was constantly suspicious. She was at it again. I've talked to other nurses I know who work at multiple hospitals. There is a big drug culture and a lot of ERs and a lot of cheating. Nurses, firefighters, cops, lab, respiratory techs. All effing each other. Yep. That is true indeed. Not at all, not most, but it happens a lot. I would never touch another woman that works in the medical field. 
Aside from all this, I've dealt with the emotional fallout of what she deals with for years. It's too much. So I moved out a month ago, filed for divorce. I told her it wasn't getting any better and that I'll never trust her again. She's writing me letters and texting and looks like she's going to cry every time I pick up my son. But now I know for a fact that going back is just more pain. Every day I feel better, regaining my confidence and becoming more sure that I'm doing the right thing. My son will be fine even if his parents aren't together. Yep. I'll just come out and say it. If they cheat, it needs to end. It's over. I know it's hard to hear that. I didn't want to hear that. I was trapped in a whole mess because my mind was still trying to make sense of what was going on. and My self-esteem was shattered. But it will get better if you leave. Thanks for reading. I know it was long, but I just felt like sharing. Wow, let me give my thoughts. See you guys, I say it all the time. And, and the reason I know this is because I had to learn the hard way. I was like him before. If you forgive a cheater, they'll say sorry, they'll cry, they'll all oh, they'll trick you. They'll trick you. They'll have you believing that wow, they're really remorseful. As soon as you take them back, they lose respect for you and they'll do it again. They'll do it again. And guess what? Just like he said in this story, you'll never forget the time that she cheated. No matter how hard you try, you pay all that money for counseling, you're never gonna forget it. She goes out with the girls one night. You're on her. What are you doing? Call me at this time. She's gonna go crazy. Why do I have to call you every hour? Why don't you trust me anymore? She goes to the grocery store. Why is it taking you so long? You'll never forget it. You'll never trust her again. Once they cheat, just like he said, it's over. It's over. Man, let's check out these comments here. Good for you. I'm on this sub because my husband cheated. He moved out. We're still married. I haven't shared my story yet, but I have to say I'm so sick of reading he cheated. I love him. Should I give another chance or vice versa? Everyone is responsible for their own well-being. Take care of yourself. Go no contact. There are co-parenting apps you can use. Or so I've been told. Amen. Mine cheated with three different men before she left me for good and married the last one. But she will cheat on him one day and I don't care. She is out of my hair. Here's OP. Yep, she'll do it again, but not to you. Glad you're out. I was just too stupid and had no self-worth and stuck with her. If I can just help one person, I'm happy. Thanks. Your soon-to-be ex-wife is the living definition of, of the word untrustworthy. Don't even look back. Here's OP. It's a shame. As much as I appreciate the services they are providing, a lot of our heroes are complete douchebags on a personal level. Now, I will tell you, I know people who work in the medical field. I've heard those same things you just you mentioned in your story. I know people who work on the police force. I've heard those same things you read in your story. Um, the thing is this. It's just like even if you take it out of that that type of prof profession, you can take it down to as small as a restaurant. I worked in a restaurant before. All the cooks are sleeping with the servers and the hostess, managers. It's it's like, even though everybody has significant others and people are married, they work together so much, especially in hospitals and things like that. And even in restaurants, like so a lot of people work long hours in restaurants. But in like hospitals and stuff, they work long hours. They're, they're around each other a lot of times. They're around each other a lot. And I've heard the whole drug usage with nurses too. I've heard all that. So you're right, man. You are right. You guys got to understand too. A lot of those professions, a lot of people go to college for. If you go to a college campus, anyone who's listening has ever been to college. 
what goes on at college parties. I heard about it before I went, but when I actually saw it, I was blown away. Is she really sniffing? Is she snorting? Oh my, oh my, what the, yeah. It goes down in colleges. And those people later become doctors, nurses, surgeons, lawyers, police officers, politicians. Yeah. Yep. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Catch you guys at the next one. How I was nearly destroyed by an ex. Oh, man. Hi, True. I am a subscriber and a huge fan. Thank you for what you do. There are men everywhere that need to hear about the true female nature. Please keep me anonymous. This is the story about a girl. We will call her Nightmare. Oh. <laughs> I met Nightmare when she was seeing someone and she still showed interest in me. Oh, man. I know. Red flag number one. The guy she was seeing was an ex-con. Oh. I know, red flag number two. Even though she was in her mid-twenties, she had not even finished high school. I know, red flag number three. Oh, yeah, did I mention that? Nightmare had, Nightmare had daddy issues. I know, red flag number four. What can I say? There was a time when I was Captain Save a Garden Tool. That was a big mistake on my part. A mistake I will not be repeating again. Anyways, fast forward about two weeks and she leaves XCON. And we start dating. Fast forward a few months and I help her get her GED. And helped her get into a university. I was really providing for her. I was a purple pill at the time. Thanks to an ex-girlfriend prior to Nightmare. But that is for another story. Anyways, fast forward two years and Nightmare started her internship. This is when she met this guy. We will call him Chad. She started telling me about how much she hated working around Chad because he was a party boy and a player. Red flag number five. Not long after meeting Chad, just like all cheaters, Nightmare became, Nightmare became rude and combative. She became so combative I became a victim of DV. Nightmare busted my lip with the right jab and threw a two liter bottle at me. Thank goodness she missed with the two liter. No, I never called the police. The reason why? I am sure if I would have called the police, she would have lied and had me arrested. All it takes is a woman to make an accusation against you and you will lose your freedoms. Yeah, that's true. Unless you have irrefutable evidence to the contrary, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. In the criminal justice world, it's called trying to prove a negative, which is extremely hard. One day when Nightmare was mad, she tells me she will destroy my career. I'm not going to lie. That scared the crap out of me. Trying to work in the criminal justice system with any kind of accusation against you, especially anything involving domestic offense, will make it pretty much impossible to own or operate a firearm if convicted. Unfortunately, to get a conviction when it comes to a he said, she said issue, women have no burden of proof they need to provide. Their accusations is simply taken as all the evidence needed. Mm -hmm. The way things are looking, it is a mockery of the criminal justice system, but I digress. Anyway, I know it is time to not walk away, but run away. This is where Chad became my life raft on an ocean of lies and anger. When Chad was asking Nightmare to spend Valentine's Day with him, she said yes. I knew this was my time to make a break for it. She had finally had Chad on lock, or she thought. However, I knew Chad was just going was just going to give Nightmare what I call the postman treatment. Lick her, stick her, and send her on her way. I knew this monkey branch was going to break out from under her and send her falling right back to me. That was the last thing I needed, so I had to act fast. The moment she said she needed space and walked out of my door, I called my family and told them to go by Walmart and buy new locks for the door. I would have done it myself, but I had the university the next day. When I left for university in the morning, 
I took a logging chain from the toolbox of my truck and chained my fence shut. I informed my family where I hid the key so they could get it on the property to change the locks. The next day after class, I went by the phone shop and returned the phone I had purchased for her. Somehow, she neglected to realize that she was using my car to get to her internship. I suppose a fair fog blinded her to this little oversight. If you're wondering, her internship was over an hour's drive away. Fast forward two days. A chain fence and two new locks later. Guess who knocks on my door? Yep, nightmare and yes, she jumped my chain fence. Her, why haven't you called me? Me, how can I? You don't have a phone anymore. I returned it and you said you needed space. That's what I'm giving you, space. Her, well, you could have called my mom or came by to see me. Me, no, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't want to come between you and Chad. Fast forward 20 minutes of this. I finally convinced her to leave by agreeing that maybe we can work it out. I had no intention of working things out, but remember men, all it takes is an unfounded accusation and an angry woman will say and do anything. Absolutely. We are always the guilty perpetrators in the sight of the law. They are always innocent victims. Justice is a lady and a woman stand together when it comes to standing against men. For the next two nights, I get a knock on my window at 2 a.m. Men, when cheaters come back, and they always do, they come back determined to be a couple again. This was becoming more along the lines of stalker territory now. I knew I had to do something other than wait for her to move on. Chad had bailed and I was left with the leftovers. Unfortunately for Nightmare, I don't eat after people. The next day I called my family and my mom, and my aunt recommended I move. I also changed my number and made a new Facebook. The next day I moved to another state and stayed with family. The day after I get to my new location, my brother calls me and tells me the police are looking for me. I asked what they wanted, and he said they needed to give me something. Uh oh. I later found out that when Nightmare could no longer call me, she went to my family's house when I wasn't there, and they wouldn't tell her where I was. She filed a restraining order against me. I think she was hoping I would be called into court and that would give her the opportunity to try and blackmail her way into my life. I never returned to my hometown, but if I would have, I am sure the conversation would have gone something like this. I'll make this go away, I'll make this go away if you will take me back. Unfortunately, the restraining order she filed was able to, was able to stick around for over 3 months. However, I was never served and it was eventually dismissed because there was no evidence. If you are wondering, the reason there was no evidence is because she was lying. My father and stepfather tried to convince me to stay in my hometown because it seemed cowardly in their minds to run from her. I'm glad I <laughs> he went to a whole new state. I'm glad I took the advice of my mom and aunt when they recommended to get away from her and as fast as I could. Men, when it comes to dealing with the crazy ex of a woman, you need to run. Because women know other women, and they know what other women can, can and will do. I know if I would have taken the advice of my father and stepfather, I would have been served and eventually to a point where I would have been unable to even go outside. By the way, if a restraining order is filed, and they are easy to file, if you are a woman and it is breached, if the police are called, the person with the order against them will be the one going to jail. Even the person who filed is the one who breached it. Wow, for example, you have a restraining order against you and you go to the local grocery store. If the person that filed the order against you also goes to that same grocery store and sees you, if that person decides to call the police, they will show up and arrest you in front of everyone. This will ruin your name in a small community. Even if the person who filed against you is following you just for the exclusive purpose of getting you arrested. I hope my story was entertaining, and I know it sounds unbelievable. However, truth is stranger than fiction. Remember, my Red Pill brothers, a woman can be detrimental to your life in future, and a woman never belongs to you. It is just your turn. I will leave you with these words of caution and truth from the Word of God. It is, the be it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Proverbs 21, 19. Even God says, stay away from these kind of women. When God says, leave, it is time to go. Stay true. Wow. Let me give my thoughts.
Yeah, man, that's crazy. The 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 part where you're you're saying so if they put a restraining order against you, and you go to the grocery store and they're there, they can call the police on you and boom, you're arrested. That sucks, man. That sucks. That's horrible. You're right about the justice system, man. When it comes to men, men get treated bad. A woman can just lie. She can just lie. He did this. He did that. I was completely innocent. They'll just start crying. I've str I've seen it. Okay? I've seen it. I'm glad you learned from that situation because you started off with, you know, this red flag, that red flag, red, that red flag. She was with someone. He was an ex-con. She didn't have a degree in high, from high school at least. So many red flags and you took her on still. But like I said, I, I love these kind of emails. You know why? Because it's not because, oh, it's juicy. You go through so much. Oh, let's laugh at his pain or anything. No, in the end, you make it out. This is truly how things work out. Now, we all love a great revenge story, a great karma story, things like that. And, you know, she, 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 it smelled like she was cheating. So I did this and shut it down immediately. Those stories are good. But most people go through a lot before they wake up. Most people are blinded by lust. You know, most people are, are just silly. You know, just, let's keep it real. And they have to learn the hard way and they go through it and then they learn and they say, okay, I'm never going to do that again. And I think you're at a point to where you're never going to do that again. You had to, you had some stones thrown at you. You got, you got beat up pretty bad with this situation. But you're never going through that again. And I get it. 